God, I'm so glad nobody listens to this. Woo! Welcome to Mount Rushmore. My name's Jeff, and I'm joined as always by Woo! This is Rich. Is Rick Flair here? This is Richard, <laughs> by the way. Did Rick Flair show up? Well, this is Michael. Howdy. Hey. And uh, Richard and Michael are always at odds, always competing with each other, always debating the top four of any given subject. And this week is no different, but this week we're tackling uh, Ikea. Michael, tell us why. Uh, I think in the last eight months. Woo! <laughs> Jeff is on drugs. He's high on lingonberries. <laughs> <laughs> um, behind the curtains, this is we are taping on WrestleMania day, That's right. so maybe he's he, maybe he, I think he has it like on his monitor, like he's not actually paying attention to us. He's just watching it's just some Swedish people. Watching wrestling. <laughs> it's, it's just a gif of Ric Flair over and over. <laughs> no, actually, Woo is the name of the chair that I'm sitting on. Oh, okay, oh, is yeah, it a Woo right. to yeah. Woo it's, chair? Okay, it's a W and two O's with umlauts. Uh, over the last eight months, uh, me and my wife Emily, uh, who was pregnant have spent a whole lot of time going back and forth to Ikea. Mm. And uh, I kept thinking, man, this is something, traveling to Ikea and the shopping experience of Ikea and everything around Ikea is something that everyone can relate to Yes, in some regard. Yes. Like I know, Jeff, you, and even you, Richard. Even yes. you. Even, even you. you. <laughs> no, both of, both of your families have a retro sensibility. Yes. That's true. Yes. So... There is an aspect of Ikea that might not relate to you because mm -hmm. you have maybe more mid-century pieces okay. or mid-century furniture. Yeah. And Richard, you guys have a, a lot of very interesting and... Eclectic would be eclectic a good word. Eclectic yes. furniture. Um, but even amongst that, I'm sure you guys go to Ikea fairly often yeah, for oh, yeah, random yeah. stuff that yeah. is inexpensive to buy. But also just the experience of going and walking around, mm -hmm. eating, and yeah. uh, consuming Swedish-made yeah. goods. <laughs> you know, I see a lot of uh, at IKEA is aspiration, like people who are looking to give their lives a makeover. God, and... that's fascinating. There is definitely a fantasy that IKEA creates, and you yes. walk in and you're like, "Oh, look at this perfectly put together room yes. that sure is a square in my room." whatever it is mm -hmm, does not mm -hmm. exactly look like this, but you can imagine yourself. I wish that there was like a single price tag that was like, as you walk into the right. room, this costs yeah. $3,200 yeah. for everything. And you yeah. can just take that to the, to the checkout counter and be like, mm -hmm. can I have this room? Yeah. <laughs> but everything is so meticulously placed and so well thought out mm -hmm. and over and over and over as you're walking around the showroom yeah. that it does create this interesting fantasy for couples or for families to be like, we could live here. Yeah, yes. they currently have one of their showcase rooms is like the tiny space thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's always sad to go there, through there and look. This 360 square feet they've created <laughs> is much better than any place I yeah. have right <laughs> now. <laughs> it always seems that what, what is missing, the, the, the thing that would screw the whole thing up that is missing from those rooms is people. Like, oh, this this room looks great. That's because there isn't some idiot <laughs> sitting there taking up all the place, space, <laughs> farting everywhere. Um, so uh, uh, Michael has chosen the topics. Richard is the first to discuss. All right. So my first choice is meatballs. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's and interesting. We were just talking about all the stuff about furniture and... I love that. That's let's, the get, let's, trans uh, let's let's get to food. The last shall be the first. <laughs> it right. seems like the thing that's at the end of the visit of of IKEA. Are you are you high? No, that's not how you do it. <laughs> are you a lingonberries guy? Eh, I wouldn't go out of my way to have lingonberries. Do lingonberries e do they exist in reality, or is it more sketchy. like a Willy Wonka sort of yeah. invented berry? <laughs> the snozberries, that... <laughs> the lingonberries. <laughs> lingonberries taste like lingonberries. I'm suspicious of tapioca and lingonberry because tapioca is in like one food. Pudding, right? Rice is in every fucking thing all over the planet. <laughs> Tapioca gets one thing. One thing. I definitely do not uh, partake in the uh, IKEA cafeteria as much as I should for how inexpensive it is. Yes, yeah. especially if kids eat free. Yeah, or it's, are you serious? No, they don't oh, eat well. free. Uh, I thought that no, they have to. You have to get it. Maybe it's like on Sundays or one, uh, one day of the week. Okay, well, they, we've been have, we've been so much. A lot of it's blurring. But I thought that there was like a kids. Anyway. Maybe you maybe you go to a special IKEA that I don't go to. <laughs> but that's Mike Kia. Mike <laughs> Kia. Mike Kia. But anyway, yeah, I agree that, that the meatballs are delicious and the gravy's delicious. And the Lincoln like I said, I can I can live with or without the Lincoln berries. Like I, I, I don't want them touching anything. 
Yeah. I'm not one of those weirdo, like, I don't like my foods touching thing. But the lingonberries can stay out of everything else. <laughs> but what is it about the meatballs that you do? Because I love horse. Yeah. The taste of horse. We all Somebody knew we had, had to, to say it. Somebody we all knew we had to come to yeah. this, right? So, and look, guys, it was a trace amount of horse meat in <laughs> meatballs that were being sold, like in Ireland. It's like a cow ate some horse. The, and then, yeah. Yeah. The Irish, look, they're the Irish. Do they really know if they're eating horse or cow or anything? No, they don't. They got no they're idea. They're happy it's not potatoes. Right? <laughs> yes, and. Yes, I, I, and, I'm guys. glad the Swedish are taking a break from the cultural <laughs> insults here. What, what is it? So it's, but they're hot, they're tasty, they they're are savory. Che- they're cheap. I think it's like $4.99. You mm-hmm. get like a dozen of them, plus some mashed potatoes and gravy, and, mm-hmm. and your little weird-ass lingonberry thing on the side. And in the great Ikea tradition, you can get some to take home and try to put them together yourself. <laughs> right. It does come in the with, oven. With a four-page instruction manual and everything. Are they called meat bull, like B-O-U-L? <laughs> no, I think okay. it, I think they actually just say Swedish meatballs. Okay. Um, and I can tell you, because I grew up in a, a town that is the tries to be, play itself as the Swedish village. Kind of oh. like how there's, oh, what's the solving? Mm, yeah. they're like Dan- I think they're Danish, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, my hometown, Kingsburg, tried to, has tried to do that, but f- Swedish. Okay. Because it was founded by like, Swedish rail- railroad workers okay. back in the 1800s. Um, and I can tell you, those are that's better Swedish meatballs than whatever crap they're... Oh, really? Ma- they were trying to pawn off at my in local Kingsville place. Kingsville. Kingsburg, yeah. yeah. Kingsburg. So it's, it's good. It's cheap. Mm-hmm. I actually would recommend... You got to go first. Because you don't want to be hangry okay. at IKEA. Yeah, there's a lot of walking around. You got to get your pro- you got to get some protein. Well, you really want to you really want to like load up before you. Your go. Sent- your uh, sentiment is so vastly different from mine. I go in there and I go get me the fuck out of here. I got to go. We got to do this fast. The- Never. Well, we'll we'll get to that. We will get okay. to that later on in the 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 cafe is so perfectly set up in that. I'm sure most IKEAs are built the same way, where you take the escalator up. And you can either make a left and head to the cafe, or you can hit a right and go into the showroom. Right. But when you wind your way around the showroom, let's say you make the wrong choice, and you wind your way around the showroom first. Mm-hmm. Halfway through, before you go downstairs, you can get to that cafe There's right the again. The shortcut, yeah. yeah. They, give you, they give you every opportunity to make the right choice. They're like, listen, you can get to it first. You can get to it halfway through. As you're exiting... <laughs> You can still get some meatballs. <laughs> no matter where you are in the store, eventually you can get meatballs and, and just, just I'm do not it. exactly sure about the layout of most Ikeas. I, I, I tend to picture it like an M.C. Escher painting yeah. where no matter where you are, you are right next to the to the cafeteria, even if you're actually like <laughs> yeah. 20, 20 like, like areas away from it. It seems like strange bedfellows. Like I always see meatballs. Somebody chomping on a meatball and with an ice cream in the other hand. It seems like there's some <laughs> weird things that don't go together. <laughs> meatball in a cone. Yeah. You don't want to yeah, mix yeah, those yeah. two up. Yeah. So what are, I'm trying to think what the other stuff is at the cafe. They have like salmon. Sure. There's a lot of stuff in there where you're kind of like... You can, they have what, like, they what have like you, good desserts too. What do you, but, but what do you... You can get a slice, of, a giant slice of cake for like $1.99. You're like... That's <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a little... They got to get off of Pepsi though. Yeah. 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 We, we all agree that... We, if you see a place that has Pepsi, it's kind of yeah, a little suspicious. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Michael, what's your first? Uh, first on my list is the Allen wrench and the 22 of them that I have in my <laughs> toolbox yes. at home. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the perfect tool for building their furniture. And only their furniture. <laughs> I don't know why I am so hesitant to throw away the Allen wrench that I get every time. It's mm-hmm. the same size for putting this stuff together every time. It's no different. You think it's going to be different. Yeah. I think that's if if you go f- if you go there few and far between, maybe you throw away mm-hmm. the, the mm-hmm. little little key. Yeah, but not me. Do you I, feel like that is the rule? Like when you do throw it away, then thus you need it. Yes, I feel like that's for me the rule. I think yeah. also they're so small mm-hmm. that you're just like ah, this isn't going to take up. Why do I have twenty of these things? Yeah, uh, I'm pretty good at following like the instruction on building the mm-hmm. furniture. Oh look! Oh look! Look at that! Look well, at that! Well, I am dragon. I it's true. I'm not like Can a, I am pay over here. I'm not like <laughs> Mr. Architect. I'm the guy. I'm the smiling fat goofy drawing guy, not yeah. the confused one yeah. that's yeah. in the instructions. Who's with the phone number next to him? Yeah. <laughs> so I feel I feel very yeah. I feel very 
usually pretty confident in yeah. it. And it's like, okay, I'm good at following instructions. I don't fall into that. Uh, I'm going to get angry when me and Emily are putting stuff together. We never like, we don't, don't fight over putting furniture together. Yeah. Hmm. We're always like, what are what that's like? Hmm. We're <laughs> always, we're always pretty on the same page or whatever. And, but that Allen wrench it is always, it's so iconic with it. It's like every, every piece of furniture needs it somehow. Yeah. Or they've kind of, there's like a handful that have figured out how to put it together without it. Mm-hmm. What's your ratio? What, what percentage of the time do you think you actually get all the parts you need versus they have clearly left out a screw? Or I something? would say 50, 50. No, 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 no. Uh, I, way higher. Oh, 99% really? of the time. Really? Oh yeah. Huh? Yeah. I'm not but, opening these, these packages of screws and bolts over like a sewer grate or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But most you, you mentioned um, Jeff earlier that you've moved and like, things have fallen apart yeah. i used to have this this five foot by five foot black bookcase mm-hmm. that moved from burbank to santa barbara to seattle back to la is it a billy, billy it might bookcase? have been billy okay that up until its final resting space where we took it down this over the, <laughs> like three months ago it had its final <laughs> all the final little pegs were pull, pulled out of the little oh, God. the grommets you didn't try to craigslist it no, well, no. My dog had eaten part of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a 10-year-old Ikea piece, you know. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. It's it's free or best offer. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's great. To, it sounds like you've had very ex- positive experiences with Ikea. Yeah, so far. Yeah, um, so far. Um, by the way, I, I I do have an Allen wrench set. Oh, I have that too. The yeah. whole, like, like multiple oh, ones. Oh, sure. Because I need it because our... Uh, Garbage disposal. If it gets jammed, the only way you can you loosen put it the up. Key in you put the key in. Yeah, yeah. How often in the Allen wrench do you feel like you uh, push too hard and your hand hits and your knuckle gets scraped? That is, mm. it's fairly common. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but now that I have the set, <laughs> it's okay. longer, so you don't have to worry about that as much. Uh-huh. Okay, so it, I would recommend. Yeah, go, go, go spend the five bucks at a Harbor Freight or okay. Osh or wherever you go. Yeah, get get the set. Okay, uh, all right. So Richard. All right, my second one is sort of related to the food one, um, is the kids section. Okay. The, specifically, the corral where you can dump your kids off. Schmalland. Ooh. To fi- yes, yeah, Schmalland. Thank Schmalland. you. Schmalland. So you can finally have a goddamned hour to yourself. <laughs> we're, we're not there yet, but within You'll the next couple of years, we'll be there. It's unbelievable. Just when you have you know, a nine-year-old and a four-year-old like we have right now, and to be able to just say, here, watch our kids for an hour. We're going to do just go look at mm-hmm. furniture. Sometimes I feel like we go even when we don't need anything mm-hmm. just to have a babysitter for an hour <laughs> uh, just so we can just wander. My, my perception of that area is like the play uh, area at McDonald's where this would be a good place to get the flu. That's what I look <laughs> <to> think. <laughs> would you like your kids to be licking, uh, <laughs> licking other kids and no one noticed? Are there <laughs> toys there that every kid in Burbank has played with? I'm sure. They always, they always they have a ball pit. It's always closed. Oh, <laughs> which I'm, I'm not going to speculate on why it was closed, but I think we can probably figure it out. Uh, but they have like movie- there was a big man and smaller. <laughs> so they, uh, they have TV. They have TV, so you can we'll do that. And they have like books. Uh-huh. And they have like soft toys and just crap. And it's great because it's the kids love it. One time we went and we're like, look, we're only going to be here for like 20 minutes. The line is like 20 minutes to get in. Let's just go. And they flipped. Oh wow! The fuck out mm-hmm. it was like no we're at ikea we get this. the only reason they're excited to go to that to go to ikea with us oh wow two reasons get me balls mm-hmm. go play in small land <laughs> yeah yeah they don't give a shit about the furniture don't give a shit about anything else yeah. um and it's just weird because it's like it's a good pl- it's a play area but it's not like go disneyland or yeah. anything but kids get so excited to be in there it's like they get to play and the parents aren't there and it's mm-hmm. it's just this like Freedom. What nefarious things happen? Do they teach him Swedish or teach him how to look up things <laughs> in computers or or Allen Wrench 101? Suicides. So, oh God. High suicide rate in Swedish. Oh, that's so, right. High suicide rate. No, it's, like I said, there have been times when we've kind of looked at the, and the line is always ridiculous. Is it really? Oh, okay. It's usually very long to get in. And it's like, well, we're, Maybe it's worth it just to bring the kids with us, and then mm-hmm. Sarah and I look at each other and just like, no, no, we we, we need this, we need this <laughs> time. And they give you like the uh, little buzzer thing, 
They used to give you that. I think oh. they do anymore. They used to give you like the little buzzer thing mm-hmm. in case something happened to your kid. So mm-hmm. you know your margaritas ready. So that you know the, the, the uh, border grill has your uh, <laughs> table ready. Now they just take your phone number. It's, okay, it's fine. But no, I the, the small end, Michael. You will learn to love this. This will be very excited. You you will debate just taking the kid, dropping them off there, and running down to like get a, a, a you know a drink at a a, a cocktail place. Oh, and then coming as, back as soon as IKEA adds alcohol to their uh, cafe section. I'm actually a little <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little stunned that hasn't happened yet. Oh, but Ling- it would be like IKEA Lingen, Lingenberry juice <laughs> cocktail. Nailed it. Lingenberry beer. Lingenberry. Okay. Guys, hello. What's your next check, check, one? Check, 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 check. Michael. Lincoln be- beer. Lincoln beer. Lincoln beer. Guys. Wallace beer. Yes, we agree. We all got it. Yeah. Okay. We got it. Uh, my next one is uh, forgetting that damn blue IKEA bag oh, yeah, at yeah. home every time. Yeah. How do I, like, every time? <laughs> yep. How is that possible? We take it out, fill it up, be like, all right, let's remember, put it in the back, back of the car. Mm-hmm. Next time you take the other car. And it's like, yeah. did you bring it back? No, it's in the back of my car. Oh, Ugh. so you got to go back. You walk through IKEA, and they give you that yellow bag of shame, mm-hmm. and you're, right. you're carrying that around, <laughs> only to get to the end, and then you have to either like man up and try to carry all like your weird collection of like <laughs> napkins. That's and, what I do all the <laughs> <and> time. Furniture. <laughs> oh, I I think we've slowly grown accustomed. Like yeah. I think IKEA was so far ahead of this because mm-hmm. we're now. In California, seasoned veterans at forgetting your, you know, the bags. cloth bag yeah. when you go to the supermarket. You pay the damn 10 cents for the plastic one. Yeah. No way I'm going to pay 10 cents for a paper bag. Get out of here. <laughs> no way. I can I can carry these eggs <laughs> and these, but Ikea, these two like, cans of tomato sauce. Well, I'm going to carry a cushion that's 42 centimeters by 73 <laughs> centimeters and a plate of hot meatballs and, 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 and all these things that don't go together and a lamp. It's like I got to put this in this blue bag that I yeah. oh my god and then you get to the end and you're like so unwilling to spend that 99 yeah. cents <laughs> mine in our in our family this the blue bag has now become like a loose toy uh-huh. oh, it's just, bit, just yeah. those it's like a, a kind of a fly by night bin for the kids like mm-hmm. army toy you know whatever yeah. type of toys ad hoc sure. thing yeah. which, which generally winds up becoming anything that's on the floor just randomly gets in piled in there so that every once in a while you open it up and it's like, oh, there's that toy I was looking for. Oh, there's my other shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I have noticed when we discussing the IKEA experience from a geographical standpoint, you talked about the things that are so far we've only got to the entryway because we've we've gotten to small land <laughs> and, and the meatball vendor. Right. I usually go through the back door and go straight to the scratch and dent area oh, oh sure yeah. sure that was almost on my list by the way yeah, yeah. oh really oh, okay i one time jen and i had this kind of um um oh henry is that the you know kind of candy bar it, it was the candy bar well we had this kind of moment where we went through shopping and then we kind of had this list and then we show up in the scratch and dent area all the shit we liked was in the scratch and dent area <laughs> oh, really and it wasn't like ruined it was it was just something somebody got and then they thought it was dumb and so they returned it Oh wow, so that's that's totally opposite of what my experience is, is with that section. Oh really? Because my experience with that section, it's just like you think it's going to be oh the stuff that's sort of like slightly off. Yeah. It, my experience is always like a little island of misfit toys. <laughs> yeah. It's like a couch with three legs. <laughs> yeah. Or you know, it's it's a chair, but it doesn't have the cushion. Here's an eleven volt light. You mean twelve <laughs> volt? Nah. 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 Yeah. There's some weird stuff there. Uh, so we are at halftime in our discussion of the Mount Rushmore of Ikea, and we'd like you to do us a favor. Go to iTunes, download, rate, and review all the past episodes. Give us your thoughts, your feedback. Go ahead and write a couple words of description of how much you like this podcast, uh, a lot or a little. And then go to the Facebook site. Go to facebook.com, Mount Rushmore Podcast, and get in the conversation with us. We've had some listeners in the past leave suggestions for future subjects and we tackled them and we turned those into episodes. We'd also like your feedback maybe on the Ikea pet peeve that you may have. So we appreciate you supporting us and getting the dialogue. And we are now back to Richard's third choice. So my third choice is similar to Michael's a little bit. I think we, we touched on it. It's getting stuck with $100 of random crap oh, when yeah. you went in 
to like, like get an office chair. Sure. We we get stuck with this at Target. Yeah, it, it, it's oh. similar to Target. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Where it's like you're going through, and you're like, okay, need to get my office chair. Look for it. Great. There's some other stuff we could use. Okay. Do we need candles? Yeah. Do we need tea, do we need tea lights? I think we need tea lights. Yeah, we need tea lights. Okay. Mine is always uh, washed. What about these vanilla ones that are a bit bigger? Yeah, we need those too. Let's do we those. need a stuffed animal that's like lips that has arms? <laughs> <laughs> Well, but it's only two ninety nine. <laughs> All right, get it. Do we it. need like a soccer ball with arms? <laughs> I, the, he has the weirdest stuffed <laughs> animals. <do. laughs> and for me, it's the it's like a, a kitchen cloths. Oh, sure, kitchen oh. towels. Because those things always disappear on, on in our family. I don't know what's happening. Oh, really? I don't oh. know what's happening to them. I just, they can get gross, and if you can replace them for a pack of four for two ninety nine, who uh, cares? I think they may maybe all in the uh, blue bag <laughs> somewhere, just bag. <laughs> getting moldy and gross. The Bermuda Triangle of your house. So it's like I always wanted, and, and they always put like that section, like the kitchen, and then the random kind of crap right at the very end. So you think you've made it out, and you're like, okay, we got the thing we wanted. Maybe we got a couple of a thing of straws. Mm-hmm. It's ninety nine cents. That's okay. Yeah. And then you go and it's like, hey, how's our how's our pan? Like the the, the ten inch pan. <laughs> well, they got one here for twenty four ninety nine. I mean, it's got pretty good, I'm sure. And yeah. Okay. Well, let's get that. What's our knife situation? <laughs> We're running low on knives. Yeah, we're running low on knives. Okay. What's our battery situation? Do you think yellow batteries are any good? <laughs> right. They come in a three hundred pack. How much batteries in this thing? And I love that they sell the IKEA like kit. With all the tools you'll yeah. need oh, yeah. to make yeah. an Ikea thing. It's all Allen wrenches. <laughs> it's just a <laughs> different color Allen wrenches. You cannot. I, I, when we went to order our, we were ordered a mattress from them a couple months ago. And we got the mattress and we only got, we only got like two other things. And it felt like such a fucking achievement oh. to like show up and be able to go to the express yeah. lane and have like two or three things. Mm-hmm. And it was like. We got out of here without spending an extra, you know, 150 bucks on stuff that we had not at all planned to get yeah, when yeah. it showed up. I felt like such a boss. <laughs> That's a huge victory. Yeah. You know, you, why do you think that is? Do you think like because it's a lifestyle store, it sells everything that's in your house? I think it's part of the, the, what we said at the beginning where you're, you're trans. You're given a reality that doesn't exist. You're presented this image of this apartment, this beautiful Swedish mm-hmm. apartment, and you're like, "Wow, everything looks so good." And then you bring it home, and you're like, "Oh, yeah, almost." <laughs> it yeah. doesn't quite match. I think that's one of the the frustrating things is if you have one piece of IKEA furniture and you buy something to match it like a year or two later, and you realize they've changed the type of wood on it. Oh, uh-huh. oh. and then all of a sudden you don't have this ash gray console table mm-hmm. you have the one that's slightly blonder oh, yeah. and you're like hmm. mm, yeah. <laughs> but you're always trying to get back you're always trying to uh-huh. you see these things put together and you're trying to yeah trying to get to this like cohesive yeah element and i think you kind of get overwhelmed mm-hmm. and you're like oh that, that pillow it looks good great all like a statement of unity like when i think of the uh, mannequins in an department store i think of something like the gap where that mannequin is wearing a t-shirt a polo shirt, then a denim shirt, then a <laughs> denim jacket. And if I buy all that stuff, I mean, I already kind of look like the Michelin man to start out with, but then you just right. look like you you were stung by a hundred bees and you're just a big puff ball. So I just, it doesn't look so much on the mannequin like it looks in your house, I guess. Okay. Um, for Michael. Uh, my next is people walking the wrong way. Slash so slow people. <laughs> oh, slow people. Oh, the slow people. Yeah. In this maze of a building. Uh, or it, or I will also throw in the people who walk like four wide with their family. Oh, my god. And gosh. slow. Yeah. When you're trying to, you know you need to get to the There's a cafeteria. Line. Yeah, you know. And you know what the shortcut is? Yeah. These assholes are just strolling along like a Sunday drivers. Uh, in our local ikea in burbank they've recently closed down the old one and built one that is two or three times the oh, size yeah. it's massive yeah. i haven't quite figured out where everything is yet yeah i used to know the old one really well it's mm-hmm. like i know it, i know i don't need to go upstairs mm-hmm. i can go downstairs and just cut right through boom uh but when you start doing the tour when you take that escalator up and you hit a right instead of going to the cafeteria and you're just walking through the showroom after your first step someone is coming the wrong way there yeah. are projected lights and arrows that tell you which way to go, that they yeah. prefer you to go. And you just keep bumping into people that are just 
either maybe they started their way and they got lost Mm -hmm. or they've doubled back because now something they remember something needs to look good. Yeah. What did that thing look like? Can you yeah. go get that tag number? Yeah. We need to write that down. Here's that little golf pencil mm-hmm. and like your little crappy uh, measuring tape that you just end up losing every time. But there is yeah. like, there's a way and maybe it's the socialist the way about uh-huh. Sweden or maybe it's just the very regimented. It's like, listen, you go up the stairs, you yeah. go right. You yeah. follow the arrows. Yeah. Why is this so hard? I think it does tell a story. Like, not, but the grocery store isn't like that. It doesn't start with an appetizer, then an entree, <laughs> then, then dessert. <laughs> or whatever. But I think it does try to tell. Like, doesn't it? You go past showcases, showrooms in the yes. first part, part. But isn't isn't IKEA? To my understanding, it's almost ironically shaped kind of like a dollar sign in that there's this S. There's a serpentine and a slash through it, and the slash is this path that you could cut through the serpentine. Yeah, you can. Yeah. You can. You can get from A to Z rather than going B, C, yeah, D, E. That's you, can, what I was, you can make your way there if you know the I go right up to the guy course. in the, the yellow and blue Foot Locker <laughs> shirt. <laughs> I say, buddy, tell me the real shit here. How do I get – How do I get? what's the shortest route from here to there? So it, I've noticed phenomena at places like Ikea, but also like Disneyland or a fair or a big public place – when the eyes open up, the feet stop. If people like see mm. something that they go, oh, look at that. Suddenly they stop walking in the middle of a thoroughfare. That drives me fucking insane. <laughs> like you can operate those both at the same time. There is a weird phenomenon that we experienced this last weekend or the weekend before or something where how often do you go to not your supermarket? Like let's yeah. say let's say you let's say you always go to a Ralph's. Mm-hmm. You know your Ralph's. Yeah. And then that one time that you decide to, oh, well, let's hit up this other Ralph's that's on the way home. And you walk in and you don't know where everything is. Yeah. You know, generally, you know, the fresh food and meat and cheese and dairy, it's all in the peripheral. Mm-hmm. And all like the other food and drinks and yeah. prepackaged food and stuff, all the other stuff's in the middle. But even when you, when you walk into one, it's like, like I would rather spend – the seven minutes driving out of my way Dude. to go to my Ralph's. <laughs> and I think that's what happens sometimes when you're walking around like Ikea is you're like, I don't know where everything is. And like you said, like things suddenly are, oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, you're this 20 minute trip mm-hmm. is not 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah. It's an, like Richard said, it's an hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No way. No way that you yeah. get out of there less than an hour. And I think it comes to people, people coming the wrong way. People, looking at things people just like people without a plan the the people with a plan versus the people without a plan come yeah. into direct conflict yeah. right away yeah i also think it can help because they have the a normal shopping cart has two loose two <laughs> two two fixed wheels right doesn't the ikea shopping cart have four loose wheels on it <laughs> so you can try to push that in the right direction well which one are we talking about are we talking about the regular shopping cart or the flat thing there's the flat thing i feel like that one's like a hoverboard in yeah. back to the future like right it just goes where it wants to go okay here's what i miss um about ikea that they don't have anymore and that is the in the office area they always had the fake computer sitting on the desk like oh, the yeah. fake laptop that was like a zaptron 2000 <laughs> laptop <laughs> <laughs> and it was just the shell, the shell of a like a Lenovo laptop. Now it's like real, right? Now they have like well, TVs. They have oh, like, do they? Oh, well, they I'm, sell I'm TVs now, don't they? Oh, I don't know. Do they? I oh, think maybe they probably. retail them now. Mm. But I just remember thinking, like, oh, I want to get one of these and just switch, give it to somebody in my job and say, "Here's your new computer." <laughs> what do you mean you haven't gotten shit done today? <laughs> You've got a perfectly good Zaptron 2000 <laughs> computer. <laughs> you say it doesn't turn on or have an on switch? Yeah. Or have a power cord? Huh. We'll get IT on that. <laughs> well, do you send it a ticket to IT yet? Yeah. Like, I can't through, help you until you do that. Do it through your computer. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't call them. <laughs> okay, uh, Richard, what's your last? Okay, so my last one. We're done. Last. We have, we, we've eaten. Yeah. We wound up picking the kids up even though we tried to leave them there. <laughs> We got the kids are like, maybe we can get some better parents out of this deal. <laughs> no, got, that's not our mom and dad. <laughs> we got our bed. We got a, we got a twenty uh, spaghetti strainers for some reason, <laughs> and now we've and we've also got our uh, desk that we want to go get right, and we've kind of spec this out. We go downstairs to the little uh, pick out your own, you know, where you have to like self service thing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you pull out the uh, the box with the desk they have to put together. It's pretty long, yeah. And you think to yourself, 
hmm, is this going to work? Or are we going to have to pay like $150 to get yeah. this thing shipped? Yeah. And you go, no, you know what? No, nah, we're fine. <laughs> we got the, we got the, we got the Mazda, we got the M5, we got the Mazda 5. We got yeah. a little extra room. We got, we're fine. Yeah. And then you buy it and then you have to run to the car and spend 20 minutes trying to find a place to mm-hmm. pull into the loading section and realize there is no fucking way this thing is going to fit in your car. <laughs> and that's my thing about Ikea is buying stuff that is just too big for your car. Yeah. Um, this happens to us roughly every trip that we take to Ikea where we have to buy some piece of furniture. How often do you ski? <laughs> and not very often. Okay. Do not have a ski rack. <laughs> and so it usually winds up with this sort of, okay, so kids, you're just going to have to have this sit on you. It's fine, <laughs> just as long as we don't make any sudden movements. Yeah. It's and does, if if it does, just duck or put your hands up because this forty pound box is going to come screaming for your head. And yeah, we're probably going to have to have it right against the back door, back window. So if we have to stop any stop, we're probably going to break the back window. Yeah, but we can make this work. God damn it! <laughs> and it is the most uncomfortable, awkward ride, and. You're pissed off because you yeah. you knew, God damn it, you knew <laughs> this was not. I told you this was not going to mm. fit. I told you, and but then it's no. I can make this fit if you would just get your stuff out of the car, and it is just a disaster every time. I I bought something from Craigslist, an IKEA bed, and it could get I could get it out of the person's house that I purchased it from. But I realized I couldn't get it into my bedroom because it just wouldn't make the corners. Oh, that's that's always terrible. So I had to try to find that Allen wrench and try to disassemble it. Right. <laughs> and I think I threw it, I kind of did it wrong a couple times. So like by the time I got it back in the bedroom, just did not freaking go back together the right way. Yeah, I mentioned that we bought our a mat, new mattress a few mm. about a month ago. Yeah, we paid the extra whatever to get it shipped to us. Yeah. It was, however much it was, it was would have been worth double. Like, that's when you know, like, financially you're doing okay, is when you can go, you know what? That's that extra 50 bucks, yeah. 99 bucks or whatever it is. Yeah. I can, I can do that. And their guys are, like, Swedish, and they're so handsome. And their I guys are coming over. You're thinking Tom's Finland. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. So, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, Michael, what's your final one? Uh, my last one is it's pretty simple. It's just uh, the Swedish names for all of their goods. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's easy to make fun of them. But there's actually you're a Swedophobe. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, they're blonde hair. They're goddamn. <laughs> What's they're so tall. <laughs> so Nordic. <laughs> I hate those guys. Why aren't they better basketball players? <laughs> Come on. Uh, it's just the, you know, to American ears, mm-hmm. we're made to English ears or to whatever. Yeah. The strange Swedish names for things. And looking it up, they actually have like a. Uh, a reason for why each one is named. They're either named after, like, uh, for example, uh, beds are named after our Norwegian place names. Oh. Uh, chairs uh, and desks are men's names. Carpets are Danish place names. Uh, kitchens are uh, grammatical so beds, terms. Beds are men's names? Yeah. So oh. all of the different... The naming conventions for all of this weird Swedish furniture mm-hmm. has some sort of reason, even though, you know, the only ones we can remember are Billy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> we're such a-holes. Yeah. All we can think of is, oh, let's, what's the what's that one bookcase? Billy. Billy. Yeah. Well, yeah, it does seem also that this – I'm so glad you enlightened us with that because I just think of co- comedians making mm-hmm. fun of these things. It yeah. seems like the stuff of, of parody. But I wonder, if is this related in any way to, like – language is it based in the language because i know like some languages have like paternal or maternal I, I versions of things like that. i didn't look that deeply uh, but like they they are made to kind of reflect yeah some sort of characteristics like bathrooms for example are named after scandinavian lakes and rivers uh-huh. so things that are water centric uh, that happen in the bathroom mm-hmm. like it, vomiting <laughs> um that's just me so it's I, th- I thought just very interesting that not only do th- it, it all sounds foreign and fun and we- like it's it's fun to say I want to buy that floor stang yeah yeah it fun it's fun to say yeah. and fun to 
know the origin of you yeah. know the Farlov Ottoman. Yeah, I, you do, often do see the photo of the designer. Have you ever seen that? Mm-hmm. Where it just looks like this guy. He's he's sixty five years old, and he's probably designed beautiful buildings, postmodern this, and he did his master's thesis on you know Bauhaus or <laughs> brutalist architecture, and now we know him from Flerg. Yeah, you know the or this dresser you know, with two parts that he designed <laughs> or something. And he's probably making more money than he ever has. So guys, um, this was, we did it. We made it through. This was pretty amazing. It cost mm. us a few hundred dollars. Yeah. Right? And I broke a window in my car. Yeah. Where are the kids? Oh, shit. oops. Well, well, we'll get them next time. Oh, We're man. coming back. We're right. Coming back. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure they got meatballs and Lincoln berries to eat yeah. to keep them happy. They'll learn a foreign language. Right. Right. Well, you know, let let me uh, discuss the ones I was most impressed by or just kind of stuck with me. And speaking of where the kids are, Small Land, I think was one of the, um, obviously the first places you come into when you visit there. And um, uh, that is a lot of insight you gave me, Richard, because I've never been inside there. I didn't even know you could actually drop your kids off there. I've never actually been inside of it myself. I'm not like a creep. Yeah, okay. The Allen Wrench. Uh, this really brought up uh, feelings and pains that I have had <laughs> using the Allen wrench. So I really appreciate it. Also, I think it also gave Michael an opportunity to discuss his superiority and spatial uh, orientation and assembling and following instructions and things like that. Um, and from here on out, it's the Michael Winfield show. Um, the spatial impact that uh, Michael feels, I think Michael sees Ikea as this giant labyrinthian box and he's trying to control it there's a lot of fear that's going on in winfield lately because he's got a kid on the way i think the, <sighs> he feels a lot of stuff coming to come out of his control it's a lot of pressure and he wants to create a box that he can feel his child is safe in so um the people who screw up ikea for michael it was really impactful to hear how much he hates swedish people for one but he hates people in ikea who go the wrong way like richard said it's like an mc escher um painting where gravitational force does not obey common standards so you never know where somebody's going to erupt from in that place and then swedish names that was very uh, insightful and edumentational so we finally broke the tie tie of ties and we have a clear winner for this episode of mount rushmore and that is Miracle Reinfeared. <laughs> foody, 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 foody. <laughs> this is the I'm in Trishmore. I am Jeff. This is the Vivi. I'm Michael. 